Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Belinda and today we're going to be colouring up this image from my new book, Colourage Wild. So guys, I ordered this one from uh, the Cool Craft Book Etsy website uh, and it came within nine days of her posting it. A really great uh, Etsy shop and I was really impressed so I'll just show you here um, I've given them a five star for both of the books but they've got loads of Asian coloring books um, Chinese Japanese Korean uh, anything you can imagine in there so it was a great store they delivered to Australia which is why I did it um, I haven't been able to get many of these uh, Asian books from overseas to Australia because now they've blocked off Amazon America so we can't order from Amazon anymore. Um, some of these books that I've ordered too haven't been available on Amazon anyway so it was really great to be able to get them from here and um, it was a really great service. It was really quick postage. The um, communication between me and the lovely owner of the shop was brilliant. She told me everything that was going on and um, as I said it came really quickly and I wasn't expecting it. I was thinking maybe a whole month before I'd get it but it came within nine days so here you go. So um, the first book that I actually got, I actually got two in that order. I'll do the other flip through later on uh, so look out for that on my channel. Um, but Coleridge Wild, Emmanuel Collin. There is two books now so there's Coleridge Wild 2. I got number one. Um, because it's the first one that I was ever exposed to. I saw it when I very first started colouring and I've wanted to get it ever since. Now the book size is around 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. I just wanted to measure it because it doesn't actually say. It's got 250G on the front there. I think that may refer to the um, grams of the paper possibly. I'm not sure. Uh, there's also 14 images in total and there's two of each image. So I'll just go through the first lot uh, and not the second lot. So it does say that on the front there as well. So it was a little bit smaller than I was expecting, but it's still just beautiful. The paper is really, really thick. And um, the purpose of the speed sort of coloring at the end is me going through every single um, medium that I had, pencils, marker, etc. Uh, the only thing I didn't try was anything with water. Um, but, oh, actually, no, I did try that, actually. <laughs> I did that on the hair. So um, I did give it all a try, and all of it was fantastic. So I was extremely pl pleased and impressed with the paper quality on this one. So the images of are of uh, little girls and they all have a side on profile or a frontal profile. They all contain uh, little creatures, uh, so there's birds and bugs and frogs and things like that in it, and they all have absolutely stunning flowers in them. So uh, really impressed with this book it's just beautiful and I can't wait to finish these ones being only 14 I hope to finish them all I mean I have said that with Christine Karen and also with um, Linda Ravenscroft but I will get there eventually um, but these ones were quite quick to do it did take me a little while to do the speed coloring at the end because I wanted to try and test every single uh, available thing that I had here or things that I use uh, in my tutorial so that um, I could let you know whether it was worth getting it and uh, what mediums go on it really nicely. So I'm just going to finish flipping through. That's the end of them now. So uh, we're just going to go into the speed coloring section of it and you can see me color a whole heap of different uh, mediums. So I'll just let you know what I'm using as I go. It is really quick. If you would like to actually see the full version of the next part, um, I have actually made that available to patrons. So uh, pop over to Patreon and have a look uh, at that one. I'll put all of the links under this video. I'll also put the link to Cool Craft Books in there as well. Um, they were awesome. They are not sponsoring this video or anything. Um, so I just really love them and it was my experience that was really good and I'd really like to let you guys know that. Um, but yeah, so let's have a look at uh, what we're doing. So the first uh, medium that I'm actually using here is Copic markers. I did find them really easy to lay down. It was slightly hard uh, to blend them. It came out slightly blotchy and I think that's because the paper was really just taking in that ink a lot. Um, it didn't seem to go through more than any of the other colours that you could see there but um, it was actually quite good and you could actually use markers here as a base or as a full uh, colour range like you can see I've done with the skin. I think if I had have done a second layer it may not have been quite so blotchy but uh, I just get the Stabilo uh, Carbothello pencils out in a little while and I just have a go um, 
laying that down over the skin to see if I could smooth it off. Uh, the second lot of pencils that I tried was Prismacolor. I didn't find that the I used enough of an area to really know how it was going with those Prismacolors, so I do use it on a flower up further as well. But um, from what I did on the eyes and the lips, it laid down really, really well, and I was really impressed with that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do Prismacolor on the this green leaf here and I will maybe use it on a flower as well later on but um, it laid down really nicely you can see the colors really nice and bright um, the tooth of the paper was quite toothy but it uh, flattened out really well there was no sort of issues with wax bloom or anything like that but as I said it was a very tiny picture but they all are so um, there's not a sort of lot of area to really do large areas apart from the background section so um, but I really did like it I'm using polychromos pencils here now they laid down really well too just looked at my Pinterest pictures to see what sort of colors to use for the lilies um, I'm using polychromo still for this first flower it came out stunning uh, it was really bright smooth uh, beautiful I also use the Caran uh full blender on this and uh, it worked fine on there as well it helped flatten out the tooth and brighten up the color in the images um, so yeah polychromos was definitely a big go ahead for me and um, I would all probably love to continue to use just the polychromos in this one um, but obviously I'm going to use a couple more types so we'll see uh, what ends up being the best I also use the Caran d'Ache Luminance White on top of the colour pencil and it laid down perfectly. Um, it was very similar to the way the Prismacolors did so I think Caran d'Ache Luminance is going to be fine on it as well. Um, it was really impressive actually. Every single medium that I started to add in uh, laid down really well and worked really well so I was actually really quite impressed with this paper. It reminds me a lot of the Linda Raven Ravenscroft book paper um, except it's the other paper that I was just saying, uh, that's actually a little bit more shiny. This one didn't have a shine on it. It's actually smooth but not shiny, so it is a matte surface. But um, still got a bit of a tooth on it, which was good. Uh, it means that all of these pencils laid down really well. Um, but yeah, really great. Loved it. So just using my Uniball white gel pen, that went down fine, um, no issues there, I could still scratch off when I needed to, um, yep, it was awesome. You can see that I also went over all of that colour with the Caran d'Ache Full Blender, it made it nice and smooth, it flattened off the tooth of the paper and it brightened up that colour really well as well. Just putting a little bit of blush on the cheeks there. I'm using the white Carbothello chalk pencil. Um, it came out really great. Uh, I think you could do a whole image with that pencil on this paper. It was great, had a great tooth and it could smudge it really well as well. So that's Carbothello chalk pastels that worked really well as well. I'm coming in now with some Black Widow pencils. Um, Black Widows are an Australian pencil. They were actually physically made in Japan, I think. But um, anyway, not the point that don't quote me on that it might not be correct but um they're actually really bright colors and um the color actually really stood out really really well on this um i didn't put a lot of pressure in here because i wanted this one to sort of look a little bit more pale but i do go in and add more color and just gradually build that up they actually worked really great on this paper um actually considering doing a whole image with these ones i haven't done that yet so um, i may have to do a whole one with these pencils uh, i've mixed between all the whole three sets so i've got the scorpion the Black Widow and also the, uh, what did the other one, Scorpion Cobra. Um, so yeah, I've got all sets and all of them worked well on this paper. So um, I've got the Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils now, also really lovely, laid down really well. I did find that I couldn't get as bright a colorage with this one, but uh, if you've seen the Caran d'Ache Pablos, they are kind of pastel-y colors more. There's not a lot of dark, deep colors in that, so um, it explains why I couldn't get a brighter color like I did with some of the others. Um, and I think that was about it. So I couldn't sort of lay as much down in this one. I did try to do some more layering, but um, the pencil just didn't want to go down uh, any more than what I did. So um, I just sort of go in with that 
that really darker pink there and just try to brighten that up a little bit more um, it uh, still went down fine and uh, I still love the way that they came out and the same with all of the other pencils So I decided to try some watercolour pencils and also some ink tents. So the ink tents are activated with water. Um, they were all really good. The only place where I felt that it was a little bit funny was uh, where the actual marker overlapped the hair. Uh, the water didn't seem to want to go very well on that section. But obviously if you're doing an image you probably won't be using a bit of both. Um, but yeah you can kind of see around her ear and at the back of the ear the paper looks slightly different there. It didn't dry off as quickly and it's probably because that alcohol marker was down there first. Um, but that was the only thing that I found I had trouble with. Everything else went down really well. There's no buckling, no uh, paper peeling, nothing. It was just beautiful. It went down fine. The water went on fine. Uh, it dried off quite quickly and um, I was really impressed with it. I use the, uh, the um, Faber-Castell Albert Dura, Dura, is that how you say it? Uh, on there as well, it went down fine. Over the top of the ink tents, it was perfect. And the last thing that I'm using now is the pan pastels. So I'm just using a sponge to pop this on with. First time I used the um, pan pastels on a full image, uh, came out beautiful, it was smooth. Um, the paper just took it really well. There was no smudging or bunching on anything, um, and I really loved it. So overall, this book is fabulous. The paper's fabulous, everything's fabulous. You could use anything in it, and I think you'll be right. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Click on the little bell if you want notifications when I upload new videos. Also, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Vero. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.